story this half an hour. Congress is calling for unity. Following the attack on Republican lawmakers yesterday at the Virginia baseball field, the shooting spree injured four people, including House Majority Whip Steve Scalise. The Louisiana congressman is now in critical condition this morning. Police say that the gunman, James Hodgkinson, fired more than 50 shots before officers took him down. Joining us this morning is former of Florida Congressman Lieutenant Colonel Alan West. Colonel West, good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Maria. We, I know that we're all worried about uh, Steve Scalise's condition. How do you uh, expect we should protect politicians? Well, uh, those are my former colleagues that were attacked uh, yesterday, and I just want to send out my prayers to uh, a good friend, Steve Scalise, and that he's a fighter and there's no finer man. I think it's very important that we cannot allow our members of Congress to be in such an environment that's been created with this violence and this violent rhetoric to be out there unarmed. I think there's, it was very important that we had those two members of the Capitol Hill police that were there. If uh, Representative Scalise had not been there, they would not have had anyone there to uh, protect them. So I think that it's important that when you look at the Constitution, they do have a right to be able to carry and defend themselves, and I think they need to have that exclusion definitely, possibly, when they're out and about in Washington, D.C. Uh, after the Gabby Gifford shooting, uh, as a member of Congress, I did carry. I mean, I had a concealed carry license for Florida, but I also was able to hire someone, a former New York police uh, detective, that uh, was my side, sidekick, my bodyguard. So I think that those are some courses of action we need to look at. Yeah, we've got Rachel Campos Duffy with us this morning, and and Rachel, obviously your family is a is a political family. Uh, your husband, uh, Congressman Duffy, are you doing anything differently? Uh, have you seen increased threats? Well, yes, I, we have seen an increase in threats, and we've seen reports of them as well. You've seen them at town halls that a congressman, you know, driven off the road. Um, I, my concern here, and I, I don't know if you share this, uh, Colonel West, is that there's this push right now to talk so much about bipartisanship, which of course we need. But um, I, I'm worried that we're moving too quickly to this happy space and not really thinking about what's really driving this. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that the Democrats are um, delegitimizing our president and it's making people really uneasy because if you don't think he's a legitimate president, then our whole democracy is in question. And I think all of that is driving this. Um, I'm concerned for my husband's safety. I'm concerned for um, all members of Congress who, by the way, spend a lot of time among the people traveling with, as you mentioned, without any security. No, you're absolutely right, Rachel, and I do think that we are moving too close to a, a happy space. Look, I have not seen anyone talk about this Antifa group. I have not heard anyone condemn groups like the, the Black Lives Matter, who was marching around saying pigs in a blanket, mm -hmm. from like bacon, or, you know, you know, wanting to kill cops. You know, we've got to get very specific about what is going on. Right after the inauguration, we had Madonna stand up and talk about how she wanted to blow up the White House. We know what Kathy Griffin did. We know about the play in New mm. York City and the CNN commentator who said it was a masterpiece. Yeah. Uh, if last night you could look at some of the leftist websites, and you actually saw people that were, you know, talking about shooting more Republicans. I read some of those comments. And we're talking about gun control. This is not about gun control. This is about the motive of an individual, and who cares if he had to use, ro or use rocks or, or knives or whatever. We have to stop obfuscating and dismissing. We have a problem with violent rhetoric, political rhetoric in the United States of America right now. All right, let me let me move on to this investigation into the Russia election meddling, uh, Colonel, because according to the Washington Post this morning, special counsel uh, Robert Mueller is now looking into whether President Trump attempted to obstruct justice. Investigators are also reportedly looking for proof of possible financial crimes. So, Colonel West, the report is weighing on futures this morning. People are worried about the agenda being even further delayed on the heels of the shooting, on the heels of this special counsel. Is this just Mueller checking a box that he has to look at this or do you think this investigation has taken a turn? 
I think, first and foremost, what is the special counsel's office doing talking to the Washington Post? So they have delegitimized right. themselves. They have made themselves political in nature. Uh, this is a conviction going around looking for evidence. This is trolling, uh, looking for something to hang on President Trump. You know, this whole Russian collusion and meddling, uh, no one says anything about Hillary Clinton's uranium deal. No one's looked into the Clinton Foundation. We still have John Koskinen at the head of the IRS, and we had no one that looked into the IRS targeting conservative groups. We had evidence of that. Four Americans died in Benghazi, but no one thought that that was, you know, anything worth looking into. And then we also had the Fast and Furious, where we had a Border Patrol agent, Brian Terry, lose his life. But no special prosecutors, no outrage from, you know, the entire political spectrum. So I think that this is turned into uh, an incredible kabuki theater, a witch hunt, and we're wasting taxpayer dollars when we need to be doing exactly what you're talking about. How are we going to get our economy growing? How are we going to make sure we have health reform, tax reform, regulatory reform, and rebuild our military capability capacity? So we need to get focused and, yeah, I, and I, put I would away also these add, distractions. By the way, Dagan I would also add Loretta Lynch basically telling Jim Comey mm -hmm. to handle the Hillary Clinton investigation as a matter and not as an investigation. I mean, no special counsel there. No special counsel, but at least we've heard from the likes of Diane Feinstein that that needs to be looked into, that they need, to, invest, and, and need to investigate that. that. Yeah. But Colonel West, the thing that American people care about, they, they care about what helps them and what helps their families and their households. What do you tell mm -hmm. the president in terms of, because Bob Mueller's not going away, at least not for maybe a long time. So what do you tell him about getting the agenda back on track, which is what the market wants? Well, I would tell the president that you can't do policy with 140 characters, that he needs to take his message to the American people by getting outside of the beltway and talking to the American people. We need to have a discussion about national security strategy. We need to work with the Congress and get this tax reform done. They don't need to go on a recess for August. I'm, I'm sorry, Rachel, but you need to tell Sean to sit tight up there in Washington, D.C. <laughs> oh, those are and fighting make it words. I don't see them much. <laughs> well, look, I, I got to tell you something. You know, You're the, the, my soldiers, <laughs> the, the soldiers, sailors, airmen, You're and right, Marines though. that we send out to, to do right. the duty of protecting us, they don't get recesses. They don't get vacations. So we need these people to stay and do what the American people need to have done. So do you think it, they'll do it? I mean, do you think that happens? It, it, I think that if it comes down to it, that the House and the Senate will have to. But I, again, I, what, what I'm really concerned, I think you're right that the president needs to get out into the, it, it, among the people, because when he does that, he'll put press, the people will put pressure on the Senate to get stuff done. Right now, the House of Representatives has done their job. It's now in the Senate. And the Senate is the one who decided, the, the, the Republican leaders in the Senate have decided to waste time on these hearings. The hearings are only happening because the, the chair Chairman of the, the Republican chairman in the Senate have decided to hold these hearings. Um, I don't think a Democrat chairman um, in this position, having all, all levers of power um, in government and, and needing to get so much done, would have done this with such little evidence as you explained earlier. No, you're absolutely huh. right. And I think that the Republicans do have a culpability because they have allowed themselves to be distracted. You know, That's I think right. one of these things that should happen, maybe these lawmakers should foot the bill for these hearings and not the American taxpayer. And I bet you wouldn't <laughs> see all these frivolous <laughs> hearings. Well, Good I, idea. I, I like I'll, defend, I like I'll defend Senator Burr on that note, though, because it, he gave Jeff Sessions, the attorney general, the opportunity to speak for himself and clear his name in the same format that sure. he's been uh, accused of God knows what and everything. Yeah. So that's why I but think it is, that they did it that. Is, a good point. It is gumming up the, 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 the schedule. It absolutely is. It's wasting time and the focus is in the wrong place. Huh. Colonel West, good to see you, sir. Thanks so much. Always a pleasure. Enjoy Aaron Hills. Thank you very much. It's beautiful here. Uh, Colonel Allen West joining us. Coming up, a new solution.